What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I am Pitching Ninja, and I'm here with a very blue owl looking Will Leahy. Will, aloha. Hey, Ninja. See, these are my dad's shirts, the easy access to open up for some skin to skin contact with, with my new daughter. But, uh, Ninja, yes, they had a lovely Fourth of July, and uh, in, in the Capitol they were celebrating as well. We had a we had a pitcher's duel between Jose Quintana and Jake Irvin. I know you love to see it, Ninja, but Irvin kind of jumped off the page, and he's a guy you've been talking about a little bit. Uh, he completely shut this Mets club down and put him sub five hundred. But what did you see out of Irvin that you liked? You know, I've been on him since a couple years ago. I think like. I think he's extremely underrated, and I think it's come out now. He's probably the most underrated pitcher in the major leagues. Don't look now, but dude has the fourth lowest ERA in the National League. And in Irvin's last six outings, his ERA is 1.70. I mean, he's on freaking fire. Yesterday, he dominated with these elevated two-seamers, these curveballs, which I love. Here's an overlay of his sinker and curveball. You can see one reason why he's been so effective. And my favorite, after his last K, look at this man get absolutely fired up, firing up the crowd, fireworks from Jake Irvin. Dude, you were filthy. And that's ended up beating the Mets one to nothing. And there's nothing more than I like other than a pitcher's duel. I mean, Will, would you rather see a 11 to 10 game or a one to nothing game when you're on the edge of your seat constantly? I used to prefer the hitting, but ever since I've been working with you, Ninja, I, I do appreciate the pitching much more. I'm, I'm going with the, the duel. You have to. Like, one of my favorite games of all time, one of the most exciting games of all time, was the John Smoltz-Jack Morris pitcher's duel, one to nothing, game seven in the world. So you just don't get any better than that. Or, I mean, like, that is baseball to me because every pitch matters. Anyway, Jose Quintana was also really good. He only had 1K in seven scoreless innings. 1K doesn't get you a lot of features here, but it was a nasty slurve. Now on the rest of my whip around the league, Andre Pallante had 5Ks in seven innings, giving up one run. He had these curveballs, picked up a sword, as the cards pecked the Pirates 3-2. to two. He faced Martin Perez, who had 2Ks in seven and a third innings, giving up no earned runs. He had this two-seamer and cutter at the knees. The Reds doubled up on the Yankees 8-4. Frankie Montas had 4Ks in five innings, giving up two runs. This fastball and cutter. Faced Marcus Stroman, who had 6Ks in five innings, but gave up five runs and had these sliders. The Guardians also doubled up on the White Sox 8-4. Ben Lively had 6Ks in six innings, giving up three runs. He had this painted fastball and this fastball for a sword. He faced Jared Schuster, who had 2Ks in two innings, giving up two runs and this fastball. Framber Valdez had four Ks in six innings, giving up three runs as the Astros shot past the Blue Jays, five to three. He had these curveballs and changeups. He faced Chris Bassett, who had three Ks in five innings, giving up four runs. He had this beautiful front hip two seamer. You know how much I love this pitch, Absolutely. as well as these changeups. Bailey Ober had eight Ks in six innings, giving up one earned run. He had these wicked changeups. And if you had the Ober for the game, you won because the Twins beat the Tigers 12 to three. He faced Kenta Maeda, who had three Ks in three and two thirds innings, but gave up nine runs. Maeda had this sweeper and cutter. And don't look now, but Maeda's ERA is 6.71. Cal Quantrill had two Ks in five innings, giving up two runs as the Rockies slid by the Brewers four to three. He had this splitter and he faced the Amish farmer, Tobias Myers who had five Ks and six innings, giving up four runs, and had these sliders and picked up a sword. Zach Gallon had four Ks and four innings, giving up three runs. Gallon threw the fastest pitch of his career yesterday at 97.9 miles an hour. I was sitting there watching my screen going, holy f***ing shit, that's Zach Gallon throwing 98. He also had these cutters and knuckle curves, and he faced Landon Knack. Who had six Ks and four in the third innings, giving up four runs and do 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 the Dodgers lost nine to three. He had these wicked changeups and painted slider. The Rays stung the Royals ten to eight. Neither Zach Eflin or Alec Marsh pitched really well. Eflin had a few curveballs. Let's skip this game. 
Michael King had five Ks in five and a third innings, giving up one run as the Padres beat the Rangers three to one. King had this painted two seamer and change up. He faced Max Scherzer and Mad Max had three Ks in six and a third innings, giving up three runs. Hit this curveball and change up for a sword. J.P. Sears had six Ks in five scoreless innings, giving up only two hits as the A's shut out the Angels five to nothing. He had these sweepers and sliders and break up the A's pitching staff. What is up with this? This is like two straight shutouts in a row. They want to stay in Oakland. I think that's what it is. It's a classic major league situation here. Bryce Miller had six Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs. He had these elevated fastballs and this beautiful front door two-seamer. This seems to be a new Mariners thing. I mean, Cal Raleigh loves his hip shot two-seamers and seems to be developing it for everybody. Miller also had these wicked splitters. And here's an overlay of Miller's fastball and splitter. And you can see how filthy that splitter is. Miller helped the Mariners beat the Orioles seven to three. Corbin Burns had six Ks in six innings, giving up two runs. His ERA now is 2.32, and don't look now, but Corbin Burns is the favorite for the AL Cy Young Award, and I still don't think he's pitching very well for him. He had these cutters, slaughtered, picked up a sword, as well as his curveball and changeup. Jameis and Tyone had seven Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs as the Cubs dominated the Phillies 10-2. He had this sweeper and hammer curveballs. He faced Christopher Sanchez, who had a rare stinker. He had three Ks in four innings, giving up seven runs, and had these change-ups and picked up a sword. Logan Webb had six Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs. He leads MLB in innings pitched. Logan Webb has gone 11 straight games where he's pitched six innings or more. Dude is a dependable ace. He helped the Giants top the Braves 4-2. to two. He had this inside two-seamer as well as these wicked sweepers. He faced Charlie Morton, who had five Ks in five and a third innings, giving up three earned runs, and had these curveballs. The Red Sox topped the Marlins six to five. Nick Pavetta had 10 strikeouts and seven scoreless innings, giving up only one hit. He had these fastballs and sweepers, had a 50% whiff rate on his sweeper yesterday, which means, Will, if he threw 12 sweepers, how many were swings and misses? That's six, Ninja. Can't get any by me. Apparently, he can get them by hitters, though. Here's a fastball and sweeper overlay that show why he can get them by hitters. These things tunnel well, and that sweeper just disappears on you. Don't look now, but the Red Sox and the Braves have about the same record. The Sox are pulling them out. I mean, this this was an in, insane game. The Sox almost blew it three separate times. But got to give a shout out to Duran here with the game-saving uh, gun at the plate uh, in the bottom of the ninth, actually, to, to save the game. They end up winning it. Just, a, just another incredible win by the, the Red guys. He faced Kyle Tyler, a man with two first names, and you can never trust a dude like that. He had three Ks in five and a third innings, giving up two runs, and had this cutter. Now one of my filthiest relievers, Andrew Kittredge, put Kutch in the matrix yesterday with this fastball. In fact, I compared Kutch with Neo. They're indistinguishable. Camilo Duvall had these sliders. Colin Holderman had this sweeper. Derek Law had these sliders and came in from the bullpen with a big American flag. I salute you, Derek. He laid down the law, didn't he, Will? I guess you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that, Will. Robert Suarez had this 100-mile-an-hour heater. Tanner Scott had these fastballs and sliders, and that dude is bound to be traded at some point. Ryan Stanek had these wicked splitters. Trevor Richards had these filthy change-ups. I mean, look at the release of this and how much he pronates through the pitch to make it drop arm side. Filthy stuff from Richards. And Tiago Vieira had this gas. My top five filthiest pitches of the day yesterday. And number five, I'm going to give it to Zach Gallen for his 97.9 mile an hour fastball. The fastest fastball in his career, as well as these knuckle curves. But he worked hard for us. We're going to give him the fifth spot. And number four, Nick Pavetta and his sweepers. Just really good outing from Pavetta again. When he's on, he's, he's about as good as anybody. At number three, Jake Irvin and his curveballs. At number two, Justin Martinez and this video game stuff. I mean, we're talking 102 mile an hour sinkers, these filthy splitters and nasty sliders. And it wasn't just me saying video game stuff. Look at Joe Davis at the end of this. He was in awe. Sheesh. 
video game stuff. And at number one, we have a soul-stealing curveball from Austin Voth. And if you look closely on Pitching Ninja Soul Cam, you can see when my man's soul left his body. And now my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. We had a good old-fashioned national anthem standoff. One by Graham Ashcraft. This thing lasted over four minutes. Absolutely ridiculous. It's a couple of patriots just enjoying the fourth. It absolutely is. America, f yeah. Enough. And the Reds won, because Boone said enough. And Ashcraft is uh, getting congratulated from his teammates. My picks of the day today are a four-leg same-game parlay plus. I'm gonna start out with a same-game parlay of Aaron Nola for six Ks or more, and Max Fried for five Ks or more. Then take Paul Skeens for seven Ks or more, and top it off with Justin Steele for 6Ks or more. And then I'm gonna add in my Pitching Ninja Profit Boost token, which will boost your profits by 30% for any same game parlay or same game parlay plus of three legs or more. What would your picks of the day be?